Thank you so much for purchasing our Remote Desktop Commander Suite solution. To get started deploying it in your RDS, Citrix, or WBD network, please continue to watch this video. Let's first talk about where to install the Remote Desktop Commander Suite software and the type of resources required on the virtual machine where it's being installed. I've ordered these in order of first preference to last preference. Every network is different and every IT department has a different budget. So my first choice would be for you to deploy our software on a dedicated or a management virtual machine with a dedicated instance of SQL Server Standard. Uh, that VM should have about four vCPUs, around 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 250 gigabytes of storage available. My second choice would be a dedicated or management VM with the SQL Server instance elsewhere on your network. Um, and on that configuration, you'd have about two vCPUs, four to eight gigabytes of RAM, and 15 gigabytes of storage. And your SQL Server standard would be located on another virtual machine, or you could be using Azure SQL. For my third choice, you'd be using a dedicated or management VM with SQL Server Express installed locally on that virtual machine. Um, and that virtual machine would have at least two virtual CPUs, four to eight gigabytes of RAM, 15 gigabytes of storage, uh, again with SQL Express installed locally. Now there's some issues with SQL Express in terms of how much data can be stored, and we're going to talk about that here in just one moment. Finally, my fourth choice, if you have no other place to put our software other than on a terminal server or WVD host itself, in that scenario, your WVD host or your terminal server would need to have four gigabytes of RAM and 15 gigabytes for storage on SQL. And keep in mind that our software will be competing somewhat, not a lot, but somewhat for resources on that terminal server and SQL Express can use a gigabyte of memory on its own. So if you do that, make sure your terminal server is well provisioned and is not running at redline currently. Now, some of you may be wondering, can I use SQL Server Express? Because it's free, right? Well, it depends. SQL Express is limited to only one gigabyte of RAM and 10 gigabytes of storage. A good rule of thumb is, if you have between 1 and 10 RDS or WBD hosts, and you do not plan on deploying our agent service to collect advanced performance metrics like CPU and memory use per user and per process, or do advanced user monitoring with screenshot recording, you can use SQL Express. Also, if you have only one or two RDS or WBD hosts, and you plan on deploying our agent service to collect advanced performance metrics like CPU and memory use per user per process, or do that advanced user monitoring I just mentioned, you can use SQL Express. Otherwise, you really need to use SQL Server Standard or Azure SQL with our software because the volume of data collected by our agent will quickly exceed 10 gigabytes, even with the automatic database pruning features enabled. Another thing you need to do before installing our software is determine the user account in your domain that our software service account will run under. Since this account pulls all sorts of information from your hosts, it needs to be an administrator on each host it pulls, as well as on the virtual machine where you are installing our software. Now, you may be tempted to use a domain admin account, but from a security standpoint, it's better, when possible, to create a dedicated domain account for our service that's a domain user, and then place it into the local administrators group on each system that is monitored and on the machine where our software is installed. If you already have a domain group that is in the administrators group on your RDS or WVD hosts, you can place your service account in that group. Otherwise, use the computer management snap-in or PowerShell to add the new service account into the administrators group on each of the monitored hosts.
One other prerequisite you need to attend to before installing the Remote Desktop Commander Suite software is making sure the appropriate Windows firewall exceptions have been set on the terminal servers and WBD hosts you will be monitoring. If you have the Windows firewall enabled on your hosts, please make sure to allow the following three exceptions, Remote Event Log Management, Remote Service Management, and WMI. You can do this individually via the control panel on each host, or you can set a group policy for all of these hosts using the Group Policy Editor. In all cases, make sure that the domain profile is enabled, which permits the Remote Desktop Commander service to pull the computer successfully via the internal domain network only. Okay, so you've decided on the version of SQL Server to use, you've created or selected the service account you will use with our software, and you have made sure to adjust Windows firewall exceptions on the hosts you will be monitoring. Now you can proceed with installation. Our software will ask you if you want to install SQL Server Express. Only choose to install SQL Express if you have decided not to use a full version of SQL Server Standard or Azure SQL. If you do need to install SQL Express, this process can take a while, often in excess of 15 minutes, so now would be a great time to get a cup of coffee. Once you're past any SQL Server Express installation, if it's required, Step through the rest of the setup and let Remote Desktop Commander install its components on your virtual machine or physical machine where it will run. You will soon encounter a licensing message. When you do, click the Close and Start Licensing Tool button. Then, browse and select the license file you received in an email from RDPSoft's customer service team. Also, enter in the email address and customer service number associated with that license file. Then click Install License from File. With the license installed, you will be taken to the initial setup wizard. Here is where you will assign the service account our software will use, as well as connect it to the SQL Server instance you plan on using. Once completed, the initial setup wizard will bind your service account to the Remote Desktop Reporter service and will create its database and all related database objects on the SQL Server instance of your choosing. First, select the domain or workgroup containing the servers you will be monitoring. Make sure to enter in the short NetBIOS version of your domain if it's not already present in the list. Next, enter in your service account in the format of short domain name backslash username and enter the service account password twice. By the way, 
Before we discuss the next section of the initial setup wizard, where you link our software to a SQL Server or Azure SQL database, I wanted to point out a very important resource in case you're having difficulty getting SQL Server Express, Azure SQL, or SQL Server installed or configured. For all SQL-related questions, go to rdpsoft.com forward slash SQL Troubleshooter. There you will find a guided wizard that will provide you with tips and workarounds to the most common SQL-related issues including setup and configuration tips. So in the configure database portion of the initial setup wizard, you will select the SQL database our software will use to store its collected data. If you installed an instance of SQL Express on the local virtual machine or computer where you are installing our software, choose the second radio option. If you are going to connect our software to an existing full version of SQL Server standard on your network, and the account you are installing our software with has full sysadmin rights on that SQL Server, choose the third radio option. Enter in the name of the SQL Server. If your SQL Server has a named instance, enter in the hostname backslash instance name. Click the three dots button to bring back the default database for SQL databases on your SQL Server in the second field, or enter in a separate database directory path local to the SQL Server itself if desired. Finally, enter in an initial database size. We recommend 10 gigabytes as our SQL database will be configured to grow automatically, and if you enter in a size greater than 10 gigabytes, it may take a while for the database to be created. Now, if you will be connecting our software to an Azure SQL database online, or if your SQL servers are managed by separate DBAs in your company, you will need to choose the fourth and final radio option. This option requires that the SQL server you are connecting to is configured for standard security as opposed to Windows integrated security. Click the three dot button to raise the SQL Connection Builder dialog, where you can build a SQL connection string by entering each of the relevant parameters. If you created an Azure SQL database, you can find these parameters in the Azure Portal Blade where you manage your Azure SQL database. If your DBA has created a new empty database on a SQL Server for you, enter in the SQL Server name, database name, username, and password credentials they provided you. Then, once entered, verify the connection is working by clicking the Test Connection button. If the connection is not working to an Azure SQL database, make sure you have enabled an exception via the Azure SQL Database Firewall so our software can connect. If the connection is not working to an internal SQL database, please go back to your DBA and double check the parameters provided to you. Once you have selected and configured the appropriate SQL Server choice, click the Check and Finalize Configuration button on the left-hand side. If you've entered things correctly, the software will be able to assign and bind your service account and create the necessary database and or database objects it needs. Please note that depending on the speed of your SQL Server, it may take several minutes to create the initial database during this time. If there are any failures during this process, they will be noted in the configuration results. Double-click on the error icon to obtain more information about the error, and go back to the Configure Service Account or Configure Database section to resolve the issues, then click Check and Finalize Configuration again. Once everything is set up correctly, the Remote Desktop Commander Configuration tool will launch, and you can begin adding servers for monitoring.